When it comes to living life, there's a lot to overthink, but I don't ever have to overthink my water. I've been drinking smart water for years and truly love its pure, crisp taste. It's vapor distilled through a process inspired by clouds. I love Chic Branding and Smart Water's sleek bottle shape makes it the perfect accessory for any day bag, workout tote, or backpack. Smart Water is the smart way to hydrate no matter what you have going on in your life. Life is full of choices. Smart Water is a simple one. Visit drinksmartwater.com to learn more. Hear that? Yeah, that's the sound of you relaxing because now you're managing diabetes with the Freestyle Libre 3 system. You get to know your glucose levels and where it's headed. Manage your diabetes with more confidence with the Freestyle Libre 3 system. Ready to learn more about the number one prescribed CGM in the U.S.? Visit freestylelibre.us to learn more. Based on retail sales data for patients last full prescription by manufacturer. Refer to the Flare NL4 study published in BMJ Open Diabetes Research and Care 2019. Safety info found at freestylelibre.us. I'm Carissa Thompson from Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa. Aaron, you know I love me an Airbnb one time. In fact, I rented a house right on the beach because I had looked at hotel rates for the hotel right on the beach, and it was astronomical. Eesh. I got the whole house for the weekend to celebrate my birthday. It was amazing. Chris and my family these days, we are traveling deep. We've got the baby. We've got the dogs. We've got the nanny. We need the space. And that's what Airbnb provides. More rooms, actually a kitchen, bathrooms. It has us covered. It just makes more sense for our life right now in traveling. It's so good. And what else I love, Aaron, about it, they've got this thing called Guest Favorites feature. It's a collection of some of Airbnb's most loved homes based on reviews and reliability. So they take the guesswork out of it, just making it so simple to decide, oh, that's a perfect Airbnb. It's reliable. It's a great review, great location. So check out the places that other people have loved now on Airbnb, especially the Guest Favorites. Woo-woo. Entrepreneurs know some of the most challenging times when starting a business are at the beginning. At Genesis, they've harnessed all that beginning excitement into the first ever electrified GV70, featuring the silhouette of a coupe and the capability of an SUV. Learn more at Genesis.com. Genesis, keep beginning. Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel Zoe, and you're listening to Climbing in Heels. This show is all about celebrating the most extraordinary superwomen who will be sharing their incredible journeys to the top, all while staying glamorous. With me, we have one of the most well-known, sought-after colorists in the world for the stars, the incredibly talented Tracy Cunningham. Tracy is beyond a trailblazer in the hair industry and truly forged her own path in the crazy world of hair. She might be quite possibly one of the hardest working women in the beauty industry, and she is beyond hilarious and so incredibly kind. I've known her for what feels like half my life, and Tracy is just so impressive, and she has worked so hard. I'm so excited for you all to listen, and I think if you know about hair color, you know of Tracy Cunningham. So let's get started, and you're going to really enjoy this one. I think it's important for people to learn that things don't happen overnight. Success doesn't happen overnight. I've never seen it happen, actually, in my whole life. And that because they see you here, Tracy Cunningham, the most well-known, brilliant hair colorist, I'm going to say in the world, you'll fight me on that because I know you, but I'm just going to say that. And I've been fortunate to know you for many, many years. I know hundreds of people that have you color their hair and love and adore you as family and friend and will go to no one else. And so I think for me, it's very important to talk to you because you're a very behind the scenes person. And you're, I also think that historically, hair colorists are not as talked about and known as hairstylists per se. It's just because when you're doing a red carpet, they're like, the makeup artist, the stylist, the manicurist, and the hairstylist. They're not like, oh, wait, who did the hair color? But I think in the case of Miss Tracy Cunningham, you know, she does, I'm going to argue to say, a massive majority of the color you see on the red carpet and has done for years. But I think the thing that I do want to talk about a bit later 
is that you are the most supportive artist. You support the people that you mentor. You help them grow. And I, I'm going to use Bryce Scarlett, but we'll talk about that later because, you know, he used to do my blow dries when you colored my hair and he's <laughs> now like, you know, the stylist to the stars doing Margot Robbie. And, you know, I could name another, you know, whole handful of incredible women that he does. But we talk about, you know, he owes that to you because, you know, you nurtured that talent. So I do want to start a little bit at the beginning because I think that's important. And I also like to really embrace how you sort of grew up and how that impacted who you are now. First of all, where did you grow up? I grew Seattle? up in Seattle, Washington. And then, and like how, so, okay, were you a good student? Were you shy? Were you like, outgoing and bubbly. I kind of feel like I know the answer to this, but hit me with it. I was never a good student ever. I really tried. I remember every year at the beginning of the year, I would, you know, you get all your new peaches and, you know, your organizers and everything. And I was like, this year, I'm going to be so good. I'm going to do all my homework. I'm going to do everything that I have to do to be successful. And I could never do it. I, it just wasn't my brain. Like, and that's okay. I'm pr- I'm going to argue to say that 70% of the women I've had on here said that they were horrific students. Not just not good, but horrific. But that's okay because everybody's a different learner. And I think the time we're living in now, children that learn in a million different ways are nurtured and celebrated and supported. So I think when we all grew up, that was not the case. You were a student or you weren't, and there wasn't really a middle ground, right? But I had an Asian mom. Like, I really wanted to do well. <laughs> and And so... Was there a lot of pressure then from mom to do well, or was she just supportive and was like, no, you're going to find your way? You know what? My grandpa was really good about it. He really wanted me to do well, obviously, but I think he understood. I think he just understood it wasn't me. Right. And my mom too. Right. Okay. Did you have a ton of friends? Were you like super social? So social. You were? I love that. I love that. Yeah. Like, I feel like I could have run for mayor at like- really for sure. And I would have won. And so were you like, okay, so then, all right, so you're in, let's just say you're in junior high or high school, right? So what's next? Are you like, I'm going to college or no freaking way I want to start working? Okay. So first of all, people don't just go to beauty school in Seattle. Everyone goes to college, (laughs) right? you know, it's a real college town. It's how my family all got to Seattle. Mm -hmm. You know, my grandfather went to the university of Washington and stayed my wow. dad went to the University of Washington and stayed. And so that's how we got to Seattle from my mom's side and my dad's side. Interesting. So, okay. Yeah. But I went to the principal and I said, look, I really love doing hair. And I wish that you had one of those programs where, you know, you could let the student go um, work at the field that they want to, that they want to work in, yeah. that they're interested in, yeah. you know? at the end of the day. So he, he made that program for me. When you were in high school. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. Yeah. So he didn't I look at you like you're crazy. crazy. What are you asking for? Yes, it was great. I just, I just asked for it and he, and everyone was so excited because it wasn't just me that right. got to do it. It was everyone. That's incredible. Okay. So yeah. then, okay. So, so we went to Evergreen college on certain days. Okay. Other days we got to pick a place where we would work. And I chose Jean Juarez, which was, it still is a salon in Seattle. It used to be in all the Nordstrom's right. and in the Four Seasons. Yep. And I got to work there after school and I thought I was the coolest person ever. And I was doing the laundry and I was offering people tea and coffee when they came in. And you I was were that cute coffee. girl that was like, can I get you tea? Can I get you water? No, but, I, I, take no, your but towel? I like to say that I was the housekeeper, you know, I was, but I thought I was the shit. I was the housekeeper and I love it. That's loved it. incredible. That's yes. literally incredible. So it wasn't, was this you know technically an internship, Trace, or no? Like, not it, really. It, it was an, of course it was an internship. But were you paid? But, no. no. No, no, no. It was okay. part of, it's like high part of the school. Program. Got it. Yeah. I got to leave at fourth period, take the bus downtown, oh my God. and go work at Jean Juarez. That is it was cool. incredible. And, but you know what it is, Rachel? Just being around people that are creative help you understand your creativity and you just get pumped, yep. you know, yep. like I can say that 
when I'm around you, I want to dress better. (laughs) I want to be you. I want to wear everything that you wear. (laughs) I love you, but you're the freaking cutest. And every time I see you, all I go is, Jesus, I need need new hair color. Jesus, I need new hair color. (laughs) I'm in love with this sequin suit that Rachel Doe makes. I have to get you one of those, by the way. It's so interesting, Chase, because when I think about it, you know, people always ask me how I started. And I was like, and how did you know that you were going to do this? I said, I'll be honest. I didn't even know being a stylist was a job. I just remember showing up, being paid literally next to nothing, being hired to work like less than three days a week. And I worked like seven. I went in on weekends. I like asked for the keys. I would just go in. And it was because I loved being in it. I loved being around it. It made me feel like whole. It like, it just got me so excited about everything. And I think as we get older in our life and our careers, you actually forget that feeling, I think, of that. It's almost like when you start dating somebody, right? And you're in the honeymoon phase. It's like that same kind of feeling. So here you are, you're washing hair towels and doing laundry. You're bringing customers to my guess is very fancy women likely because this is a very yeah. fancy salon. Yes, but it's also Seattle. So. Right. <laughs> I mean. So there you are. You're like, I can't believe I'm here. I love being around people. This is my, like, I'm so excited right now. Okay. So what happened? So what happened was honestly, when I was about to graduate, everyone was like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I was embarrassed to say, I was going to go to beauty school Mm -hmm. for some reason because I felt like everybody else was. Well, it's not college. It's not college. It's not college. So I tried college and it wasn't for me. And I moved to California. I lived in La Jolla. I worked at a real estate company. Okay. And I worked for a real estate person. (laughs) And then I know um, his name was. I worked as an assistant for a moment for this guy, Mike Bruno, who actually started First Dibs. Oh Um, my God. I know. I haven't talked to him (laughs) since I was his assistant, but literally I was telling somebody the story that I used to work for this guy, this real estate guy in San Diego, and he was so cute and he was in his twenties and we just, I just loved it. And they were like, Bruno, he started First Dibs. I'm like, wow. We all did really well. Right. Exactly. Like, yay, everyone. Yay, everyone. Yeah. I always loved surrounding myself with either smart or really creative people. Yep. Yeah. Just honestly, no in between. Right. I don't have, I don't have time for these other people. Right. I just like, I love it. I love kooky people and I love really smart people. It makes so much sense. Okay. So you moved to La Jolla, you're working in real estate. And then how do you trip into like hair world? What happens? Then I moved to Los Angeles Okay. and I started working at LA models. Okay. And I know it's crazy. Oh my God. They started doing this other thing at at LA models. My God, headhunters. Okay. And so I started working on that side. Okay. And and the person next to me hated me and he got me fired. (laughs) And they were like, Tracy's not doing her work. I was like, yeah, I am. I'm doing the best I can at this desk job. And I swear. And then I got a job at a PR firm. You literally did all of this before you got to hair. This is oh, amazing. Oh, yeah. Well, keep in mind, I'm not keeping jobs for very right. long. <laughs> oh, wait, how old are you at this point, Trace? Are you like 20? Oh, I'm 19. 19. Okay. 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 So I've lived a, lived a very long life in like two years. <laughs> so then I, I got fired. I went to a PR agency trying to remember the name of the agency. It's a big one. And then I got a job working for Bette Midler as a a queen, as a nanny. And I said to her, look, I could do this for about a year and then I've got to move on. But I just thought, what a great job to have. Hold on a minute. You got a job working as a nanny to Bette Midler. I mean, we, I think we just Mm -hmm. have to pause for a second. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Bette Midler is like the queen. Okay. Okay. So what happens? So her hairdresser, Robert Ramos would oh come God. over all the time. I know Robert. And I would go hang out at Estilo all the time. And I mean, Teddy, Antolin, oh and Chris McMillan, oh and, God. and Robert Ramos, all these great people. These are like um, legends of hairstylists legend. and hair world yeah. and hairstylists yeah. Celeb- for celebs, photo shoots, fashion, everything. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. So I knew Chris McMillan before he was Chris McMillan. Yep. I'll just put it that way. Yep. Oh my God. I'm and 
<laughs> and then we had this huge earthquake. 94. Oh, and by the way, I got pregnant while I was working for Bet. Oh, my gosh. And- oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> and, she- and let me mention, I got pregnant while I was a nanny for Bette Midler. Right. <laughs> On one of her movies for the boys. I was working for Bet, going to Estilo all yep. the time. When Robert wasn't around, I would do Bet's hair. Ah, got it. Mm-hmm. I went to cook. Uh, yeah, I just did so much. I would cook and I, I, it was the best job ever. It's the best no job. Way. You will never learn more than when you are someone's nanny or personal assistant or family assistant. You will do literally every job imaginable and figure out what it is that you love to do. I say that My all the dream time. My is being like a full-time mom. That's all I ever wanted to be. Mm-hmm. So it was a great job. Yeah. So, yep. and then we had this huge earthquake okay. and Bet decided to move to New York. Got it. And so I got another job working for another celebrity yep. and bet said i don't want you schlepping for anyone else you need to go to beauty school so <laughs> oh my god i love her there was this whole thing but then she paid for me to go to beauty school of course she did yeah see these and are then, the, these are the people tracy that we i mean yours of course happens to be bet midler duh but like it's right? not like you didn't pay your dues prior to that but i mean that's that's what you call like a gift mentor that not only sees your starry eyes and your drive and your talent, but says, okay, I'm going to help you take the next step. That's like the dream. And also, obviously, I was like a really hard worker. Yeah, of course. She She wouldn't have done it. And which it was great because I could work while I was going to school. And, you know, she thinks of the full picture. She didn't just say, I'll pay for your beauty school. She said, I'll pay for your beauty school and I'll pay for Max's daycare. My God. Yeah. Blessed. Blessed. Truly blessed. And her daughter was best friends since they were five years old with Lily Aldridge. Mm -hmm. Lily. And, you know, Chris McMillan had the Rachel and I had the Lily, the ombre. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yes. (laughs) And the thing is, is that that is a really, a real natural hair color. Yeah. That just happened. I mean, you could see it in all the children that you see. You see the natural hair and everyone says, oh, my gosh, I wish I had those highlights. Yep. Well, when Lily was like, I think she was 16 or 17, mm-hmm. she did. I met them through co- you, by the way. I met Lily right. through you. Mm-hmm. Right. She did the cover of Mexico Vogue, mm-hmm. Mexican Vogue. Mm-hmm. And they dyed her hair dark. And she always had a little ombre right. naturally. Right. So even though the hair color was around, it was, be- you know, you could see different people with this hair color because it was a natural occurring hair color. Mm-hmm. But I did it on Lily and she has such dark hair. Yep. And it just was such a hit. I remember Jacqueline Jarrett came in from Nylon Magazine. Mm-hmm. Do you remember when? Yeah, of course. She walks into the salon and she says, okay, what do you have for me? What's new? What's going on? And I said, okay, well, everyone's obsessed with Lily Aldridge's hair color. Mm-hmm. And she said, I don't know who Lily Aldridge is. <laughs> and I was, oh, okay, never mind. So I said, what do you want to do to your hair, Jacqueline? She pulls out the cover of Marie Claire Magazine. And it has both my clients on it, Jennifer Garner and Jessica Biel. Oh. And you open it up and in the middle is, is this 10 page or something of the most beautiful pictures, colors of Lily Aldridge's hair. And I said, bitch, that's the photo that everyone's getting. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And we laughed so hard. <laughs> So that's ombre. That's not bronze, right? Different. No. Okay. Totally totally different. And And for those of you that don't know Lily Aldridge, she is a longtime supermodel. One of the very famous faces of Ralph Lauren. She's a huge model and mom and amazing person. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. She's amazing. And everybody wanted her hair. And then they, and then it started going into like dip dye and all this crazy stuff. But it was amazing because, I mean, I was successful, but it's no, nice this, to have like, a turn the corner. Color. Sure. Yeah. Nice to have a signature. Oh, my God. Tracy, that's so crazy. It's so interesting, though, because you're also so famous for blondes, every shade of blonde. I think brunette is such a challenge, and every brunette I know is like, should I go blonde? I'm like, no. There's this huge, beautiful gray area between, you know, that I think you've really yeah. created, Trace. And I think that's your signature. I, but I feel like everyone, I, I feel it, like you're the queen, Tracy. Like everyone just is like, no, but oh my God, Tracy Cunningham, Tracy Cunningham. <laughs> I think that so many people become blondeaholics and they get too blonde. And it was a really nice thing, the ombre, because 
it was, it really, it, it gave brunettes an opportunity yeah. to be blonde and brunette at the sure. same time. Of course. Right. And then, you know, I have all my famous redheads. Yes, you do. Yes, so, you do. I, listen, I just think as a colorist, you should try to be good at all the colors. Yes, you so, should be. Yes, <laughs> you need to be great at all the be. colors. You should not be known for your blondes or brunettes. Or I, I agree. Just, to be honest, Tracy, I don't think about you as one thing at all. I think of you as the everyone, every, every manager, every agent, every publicist just would always, this is like me and my styling life. They'd be like, okay, she's going to go to Tracy today and then she'll be at the fitting afterwards. So she's going from platinum to brunette for this part. So she's going to be at Tracy a while. It was always like the Tracy chapter and then like send to us, you know? Do you wake up ever and go? Because I remember coming to the salon for you and it was like every week it got more and more and bigger and bigger and more people wanted Tracy and more people wanted Tracy and more people wanted Tracy. And at any point where you just like, oh my God, I'm going to lose my mind. Cause I never, I never sense that from you. I never sense a lack of gratitude for where you are. I also always still see the sparkle in your eye that no matter how tired you are, even if you've colored 40 people in a day or you did a 24 hour trip to New York to go do someone before a big event, you always are still like kind of laughing and giggly. And you're sort of like, even if you're delirious, but you still show how much you love and appreciate what you're doing. I mean, that's how I always feel around you. Well, I'm going to go back to, I was the housekeeper at a salon (laughs) to start off. Is everybody listening? Because this is what we talk about when you, when we say pay your dues, pay your dues and you will be grateful forever. I did the towels (laughs) and I offered people market spice tea or coffee, water. (laughs) And I thought it was the best job in the world. And then now I get to be one of those people that I was so in love with. Yep. So I'm flying high. Yep. You know, being sexy. And I was a single mom. So I never, I never dreamt as big as I got. Sure. If you know, I do. I just want to be able to, (laughs) I just wanted to be able to pay my rent and, you know, feed my kid and take him on vacation. Yeah. You know, pay for his school. Yeah. So, so I mean, was, I'm pretty sure we've really surpassed that in by a landslide. <laughs> and, we um, did. I, and we did. But so, I never said no. Right. I never said no. Always worked really hard. And still, you know, by the way, I know that there are some people that that will say to me, "Still, you have to have boundaries." Mm-hmm. And I'll say to them, "I'm in the service business. If you want to be successful in the service business, you can't have boundaries." And it's really nice to be on a show like this and you're blowing me up, but I'm going to be honest with you, Rachel. I'm not, you know, I mean, I'm very popular, but I'm not, you know, when people are like celebrity colors, I get embarrassed. Well, because I'm, because I work for a living. I do hair for a living. I don't, you know, I'm not, yeah. I'm not some genius. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, so I'm not, I would argue that in a movie. I'm not, whatever. I'm not a singer. I'm not. You know, I, I color hair for a living and I honestly, I see so many, you know, hairdressers that get such big heads and I, I honestly don't like it. Yeah. I, I, I kind of get disgusted by them Yeah, and I think you need to keep your feet on the ground and remember that you are in the service business and you're here to serve. And I'm, I'm super happy about that. Entrepreneurs now. Some of the most challenging times when starting a business are at the beginning. At Genesis, they've harnessed all that beginning excitement into the award-winning GV70. And with the first ever electrified GV70, you get all that stunning design and innovative tech in an electric vehicle. The electrified GV70 features the silhouette of a coupe and the capability of an SUV. The exclusive G Matrix grille stylishly hides the charging port. Inside, discover a driver-oriented cockpit featuring fingerprint recognition, available Nappa leather, and premium navigation with a 14.5-inch HD screen. Engage boost mode for an exhilarating 483 horsepower. And when it's time to charge, DC fast charging will give you up to 80% charge in minutes. Your Genesis electrified GV70 is waiting for you. What will you begin? Learn more at Genesis.com. Genesis, keep beginning. (laughs) 
When someone is just exceptionally good at what they do, it can be a teacher, a chef, or a doctor, you know you're in good hands. It's like watching Oprah do an interview. They know exactly what they're doing, and you're confident in them. When you find the right doctor, you can feel it. You feel heard and at ease. On ZocDoc, finding the doctor that's right for you is seamless. The quality care you need is just a few taps away in the ZocDoc app. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. When you're not feeling your best and just trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up all your energy. That's where ZocDoc comes in. Using their free app that millions of users rely on, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. Book an appointment with a few taps in their app and start feeling better, faster with ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Zoe and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within just 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Zoe. ZocDoc.com slash Zoe. Can I tell you something funny, Trace? There's a reason we've been connected friends for many years, and that is the fact that I say the exact same thing at least once a day, that Mm -hmm. I think there is this big confusion and movement now where, like, yes, I ended up on the other side, not because that was the plan. It just kind of happened. And I will always be more comfortable behind. But I will say that the thing I scream at the top of the mountains is that when you are a colorist, a stylist, a hairstylist, a manicurist, makeup artist, you're providing a service. And it's so interesting what you said because I never had boundaries. I didn't have a boundary until I had my kids, honestly. I remember, Rachel. I I remember. I didn't. And what you just said to me is so profound because I don't know other than to myself and to my team when I'm just like, there are no boundaries. Because if you don't say yes, someone else is, right? If you don't answer that phone, there's someone else's, right? And like, if you're okay with that, then fine, make your boundaries. But just know, no one waits for anybody. And you are a service and you're providing a service. And when people used to say, oh, Rachel, you're this, you're that. No, I'm dressing people. I'm styling people. I'm creating an image with people. This is this is a process and this is a service. And I think over the last 10 years, even the last five, I mean, there is just, there are a lot of people in this industry who are getting a bit confused. And I think that- You think it's internet? Yes. <laughs> Our whole group that we all sort of grew up with mm-hmm. aren't like that. No. I think it's partly the internet where everyone can be their own you know, celebrity and advocate and promote their own self and their brands and things like that. And then I also think that there's a lot more support from the talent. So meaning, you know, I always tell the stylist now, I'm like, you guys have no idea. Like I didn't, there was, there was never a thing where I would ask a client to be on a cover of a magazine with me, let alone pose pose in a photo with me. Or like do an interview on my behalf, you know, that would have had to have gone through five different people to happen. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's just a different time. And I think the one great thing is how supportive the actual, many of the actual celebrities and and talent are supporting their teams and advocating for their stylists and their hair and their makeup and, you know, giving them so much public love. I think that's really kind. I just didn't grow up that way. And I think that's why there wasn't confusion as to who was (laughs) on what side. But I think to your point, people do get inflated and they do lose their way. And I think, and that's my whole point about you is I think you are such a success because when I see you working and when I see you with your clients, it's like, there is no confusion as to your role in this equation, right? But I do think I'm still going to argue with you and say that you are, in my opinion, the most well-known hair colorist in the world. Because I don't, I think when people say Tracy Cunningham, I don't, I think anyone who knows hair color and what that is, they'll say, oh my God, Tracy Cunningham, right? And you can take that as you will, but I think it's also led to incredible opportunities in your creative consultant to Olaplex and Redken and, you know, all of these amazing products that, you know, I would arguably say that Olaplex did change the texture of my hair. I would say that. And I actually didn't even know you had anything to do with it as a consultant or any anything otherwise. 
But I mean, how do you feel now? Do you approach work differently in terms of like, do you say like, cause I know Jen Atkin now, like she literally has certain days that she says, these are for my kids. Here's days that you can reach me. She has it very scheduled out. I'm like, you do? Like, I wouldn't even know how to do that. I wouldn't even know how to be like, don't call me today. Call me tomorrow because today's not a day where I can talk to you. <laughs> yes. I feel like Jen's always been good like that. I know. But I'm I, not. I'm not. So yesterday I got to my client's house at 630 and AM or PM? Sure, PM. Okay. And they thought for sure that I'd been resting all day because it had, it was Sunday. But no, I, I was at I had the salon yesterday all day long. Of course you are. Doing like 11 people. <laughs> So, <laughs> of course you are. And it was all because I couldn't say no and I didn't have any room to put them in any other days. So I just said, you know what, guys, let's just open up Monday or, or Sunday. <laughs> and my assistant said, I thought we were only going in for two people, but I kept adding it because people kept texting me and I kept saying yes. Trace. But I will say this I will say this. I have trained a lot of amazing amazing hair colorist. Yes. And I've just used and one and plan to use her again because look, I already have Ashley, yep. she's amazing. She's incredible. She's very I love special. Her. Me too. But you know, COVID changed me. Yeah. COVID totally changed me yeah. where not my work ethic, but Rachel, you know, you saw me do I'm on a regular day, it would be like 40 people. A day. Oh, yeah. No, actually. Holidays would be more like 50. And you're like, how do you do 50 people a day? Yeah. Because a lot of them are bases. Right. Because I don't just do celebrities. I do a lot of women with gray hair also. You do, do a, a lot, lot of, of women that are... I would like to go on record and say Tracy does a lot of non-famous people that are just a amazing lot. women. A lot. A lot. Oh a lot. God. And people are like, you should give up your regular people and just no, do celebrities. No, you're not that person. Like, no way. No. No way. I, I mean, I've known these people since before they had children, yep. since before they got married, yep. since before, you know, I mean, you just don't get rid of people that have stuck by you for 25 years. But hear that listeners, that, <laughs> hear, that, so, hear that so listeners, COVID, yeah. 30 years, 25 years. So during COVID, imagine I'm an athlete because I mean, people can't do that kind of work, like standing on their feet all day long. And what I do is. Okay, so if I start at nine and someone calls me and says, I need to be squeezed in and I already have 35 people, what am I going to do? Well, I add them at 830, obviously. And then the next person, I add them at eight. And then the next person, I'm like, oh, you can't do early morning. Okay, so my last client's at five. I'll take you at 530. You know, so, oh, you have face color. Come at four and then I'll do your highlights at five. You know, so I mean, I'm constantly juggling and making every trying to make everybody happy. And so... It was like I was an Olympic athlete training every single day for the fucking, you know. I've seen it, babe. I've seen it in action. It's mental. So (laughs) COVID, COVID, all of a sudden I'm forced to sit in my room for 73 days, like never going out of my house. I mean, not even J-Lo was getting her base color done. I was sending everybody their base colors. Oh, I learned to, I learned to bump my base in COVID. I did. Yeah. I did. Yes, and I had I Skylar, fa- my my oldest son, do the back. Yes. I FaceTimed <laughs> with J-Lo and Mariah Carey. Casual. Um, Me too. Faces. And um, I FaceTimed with Ellen DeGeneres because I had to send color to her so she could do Portia's hair. <laughs> I swear. But I did not leave the house. And it was crazy. And I slowed down. Yeah. Like, yeah. like if you're an Olympic athlete and you don't train every single day, we got back to work and we're like Wait, exhausted to yeah. Yeah. doing 10 people. Yeah. Exhausted. A hundred. And the greatest gift of all was my assistants who did go back to work after the 73 days. And some of them would have to go and do bases mm-hmm. um, during, during those, those days. They all went on the floor. They all created relationships, better relationships with my clients. Mm-hmm. And they, they now do a lot of my clients. Yep. And it's so awesome. Yep. And they're all doing so well. Isn't that incredible? Love- and you're oh like gosh. the mama bear, right? Yes. And it <laughs> makes me so happy because they're all killing it. Yep. I love it. I so want to quote that. So-, so it makes you so happy that they're all killing it and they're loyal yep. to you. They are grateful to you and they learned from you. Yes. I love it. Just makes me so happy. 
Because yeah. all you want is for everybody else to do well around you. You don't want to be the only one. No, of course. Except I just, you know, for me, part of the reason I had to pause from styling was because I just, it didn't work for me. I didn't have magical yeah. people like you. I had the people that do the opposite. <laughs> I, <laughs> I had the people that take the clients, run, stab you in the back and leave. I had, I had, I a, ha- I had a handful of, don't worry. yeah, exactly. I mean, listen, it's, it's hard. But I think the fact is, this has been blood, sweat, and tears. Was it, have you ever woken up and been like, I can't do it anymore? Or do you still wake up now and go, I love what I do. I love what I do. And I've found a healthier way to do it. Well, I don't know if it's healthier, but I do, <laughs> I do less people during the day. Mm-hmm. And, but I'm still working almost every single day. And you still love, love it. You still love it. I do. I still love it. If I didn't love it, I would I would not do it. By the way, that's what I always said. That's that's why I had yeah. to pause from styling because I said, if I can't wake up and remember why I love this, I have to pause, you know? Right. So but I wake up every morning and I'm like in a panic, like, what am I doing today? What am I doing? What time do I start? You know? <laughs> It's it. By the way, it's like that salon. Like it's that salon panic. It's the eating while you're standing, running in the back, shoving a sandwich. In your face. Yeah, love you so much, Tracy. I think you're a living legend, quite frankly. And I, your energy is very loving. Your talent is beyond. I know a lot of the celebrities that you do, and I know a lot of the everyday women that you do, and they all love you and appreciate you the same to be honest. And so my question for you really is, you're obviously, in my opinion, from where I sit, you're probably living beyond your dreams at this point, just your life in general, nothing to do with money, just, you know, Yeah. I think, I think as you said earlier, I think it's like your goal was to feed your son as a single mom, pay your rent and be able to take him on vacation and send him to school. Yes. And now you are really just at the top. And it was so important to have you on. And when I, when I started this podcast months ago, I was like, I really want to have Tracy on. And I think it's because people don't recognize the importance of hair colorists and hair artists and hair geniuses. And I think people don't talk about the talent behind enough. And when I think of hair color, I think of you. So I've had the view from the inside. And I think just like your story, your journey, I mean, it was hard. Yes, it was very hard. I've cried many nights. <laughs> and so your and advice my- to young Tracy, to, to young people, or even not young, just people that are like, hey, I love doing hair. I may want to consider doing this or I want to pivot or my kids have just left for college and I've always been great at hair styling or coloring. What would you say to them? I would say find somebody really good to assist Mm -hmm. and work. Just please remember, I don't care how big you get on Instagram. Please remember that you are in the service business and remember that the best way to get clients is through referrals. Yeah, and, that's true. you know, it's funny because I, I don't take anybody from the front desk and I haven't for years, I would say about 10 years. Like you call my salon. I do not, you cannot book an appointment with me, but if you know somebody that knows me and you say like, Oh, Rachel, if you called me and said, Oh, my housekeeper put black all over her hair. Can you please take her on Monday? And I would say, yes, right. I don't care who it is. I just want to make sure that that someone can vouch for them. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. (laughs) That's so interesting. And the only thing I ask, I don't ask like, what do they do or whatever? I just say, are they crazy? (laughs) Right, right. I don't crazy. (laughs) I just don't want crazy. Okay, that's it. (laughs) But I like, I don't mind. And my assistants, you know, every once in a while, because I gave so many clients away during COVID and you know, because I really wanted to build all all of my old assistants. And so every once in a while, we'll take a new client. And I always say to my assistants, I'm taking this client because I want to make sure you have Mm -hmm. people Mm -hmm. to take, you know, when when you go on the floor. So yeah, but Mm -hmm. I honestly, I just want people to stay grounded, get a good education, try to take classes. Redken has classes, which are great. You can also get a lot of great online classes. You just have to become really good at your craft. And when I knew I was successful, Rachel, I knew I was when I would have moms and daughters Mm -hmm. and sisters, you know, those kind of referrals or groups of friends would all come to Mm -hmm. me. You know, that's the biggest compliment. And then, of course, now we have Instagram and that's a good way to do it, you know, but, you know, it's still 
still hard to build. And, you know, you just have to be very consistent and listen to your client. And if they say, you know, I'm not sure if I like my hair, you know, don't get upset. You didn't, you know, just fix it. Yeah. That's what I love about color. You can fix anything. Yeah. You know, (laughs) that's actually a really good point because when I watch people do color, it is actually a science. It's like a chemistry experiment every single time, in my opinion, when I'm watching it. And I'm like, God, there's so much margin for error here. To me, that would be so stressful. But to your point, it's like you can change it. You can change it and you can fix it. And I think that when you're an artist, no matter what kind of artist, but when you're working with people and they're hiring you to do something, there is this thing where, you know, I think you hear about artists that have tantrums and they're like, if you don't like it, go somewhere else, right? So I think another really great takeaway here is basically like, you did it. They're saying, we don't love it. I don't love it. And you say, okay, let's talk about it. Let's fix it. You listen it's to them. Novel idea, I- Trace. <laughs> no. Right. I'll listen to my assistants talking to my clients. They're blow drying their hair to check. And, and this assistant saying, no, it's really good. It's really good. But do you think it's too stripey or whatever? Right. I don't know what there's. Right. And, and I always say, let's just, let's fix it right now. And I'll say to my assistant, look, you have to listen to the client. The client's saying that they don't like it when they're in your chair. Right. Imagine what's going to happen when they go home. Yes. Ask all of their friends if they like, you know, <laughs> yeah. they're going to ask everybody, wait, what do you think? What do you think of my hair? I think it's this. And they're all going to, you know, and then you're going to have to come back and do it anyway. So just do it then. Fix it. It's so true. Oh my God. Oh my God, mm-hmm. Tracy. It's so true. Also, I do want to note Jessica Beale's hair color is epic. <laughs> like oh, it actually so is. That, she's so beautiful. It's, so beautiful. It's, it's actually mental how beautiful she is. But that hair, that gorgeous hair, I, it really just the cheekbones and all of it. Yes. But like, yes, you know. Well, I love you, Trace. I love your story. I love your success. I love how nurturing you are. I love what a mama bear you are. I love that you've been this badass single mom working your fucking ass off. But I also love watching you help other people win because that's rare. And you know that. That is one of the most important things that you can do yes. in this world. Yes. To help other people. Yes, I know. Some people don't want to be helped, but if they want to be helped, then you help them. Yep. I love you, Trace. I want to say this. I've watched you with all of your people and how nurturing you are. And I want to say, same girl, same. You're an inspiration to watch. And I've known you since the beginning. Well, not the beginning, but... I mean, no one knows. I mean, the only person who knows you from the beginning is Roger at Georgetown. <laughs> that's 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 true, by the way, Trace. That is true. He's the only one. But Kevin, my parents. Yep. I've seen it all. And you've also been amazing and a nurturer. So I love you. I love you too. too. I love you too. Yes. It's that time in the show when I answer two listener questions. So let's see what we have today. Okay, this is an embarrassing question. What television shows are you currently watching? Okay, see, if you know me, I'm not a really big TV watcher. And I also tend to watch series over and over and over again because TV to me is my sort of like 11 p.m. like check out kind of thing. It's an escape. And very often I find myself watching teen or tween shows and movies, very admittedly. So currently, I am binge watching for the second time Outer Banks. So there, I said it, okay? And I might have stalked Madison Bailey at an event recently and said we were going to take a picture for my kids because my kids watch it with me. Of course, I fast forward the inappropriate point parts. But um, yeah, I may have taken that picture for me, but it's cool. So I'm just going to own that, okay? What's the one thing you're cleaning out or getting rid of for spring? I don't necessarily get rid of things necessarily, but I would say that I do a shift. I do like a closet shift and I start to take all my heavy clunky boots and swap them out, you know, and take the the prime real estate in my closet for more like caftans and light denim pieces. And it's time for spring and spring shoes and spring bags. And I start to just take out all my heavy, heavy things that I just can't even look at anymore because we've had such a rainy winter in LA. So I'm very excited for spring, summer this year. Normally it doesn't, I don't even know that it's happening, but this year, very excited. 
Okay, everyone, don't forget to submit your questions for next week's episode. All you have to do is DM us your questions to at Climbing in Heels Pod on Instagram, and I just might answer them. I just want to thank my friend Tracy Cunningham for coming on the podcast. She is such a unique and incredibly talented soul. And I mean, one of the things I love most about her, I would say, is that she really cares as much today as she did when she, you know, as she talked about, was bringing tea and doing laundry at her very first job in high school at a very fancy hair salon in Washington. And I think for me, and it might be because I'm just a little bit old school, but I just have such an incredible appreciation for the legends that I know in the fashion industry, in the beauty industry, um, who just really started what they do from the very bottom, climbed their way up by just really working harder than everybody else in the room. And most importantly, I would say driven by an incredible amount of passion and love for what they do. And I think that's why Tracy, with all of her success, she really does not need to work anymore. Certainly not as hard as she does. And she's doing regular people. She's doing famous people. She's doing the people that she, you know, has been doing since they were teenagers that are now, you know, mothers with kids in college. And I think to me, that's just a testament to her talent, her work ethic, and ultimately her very deserved success. If you want more Climbing in Heels content, follow me on at Rachel Zoe and at Climbing in Heels Pod on Instagram for more updates on upcoming guests, episodes, and all things Curator. I will see you all next week. Mwah. There's no distance too far for the perfect trip. Hi, checking in for... Or the perfect table. Hey, where are you? Coming! And when you get access to Resi Priority Notify with your Amex Platinum card... Hey, this looks amazing! I'm so glad you made it. And travel benefits at fine hotels and resorts booked through Amex Travel. It's worth the trip. That's the powerful backing of American Express. Terms apply. Learn more at americanexpress.com slash with Amex. You know that feeling when you walk into your home, take a deep breath, and feel new? Well, that's what it's like to use Clorox Sentiva. Because Clorox Sentiva smells like coconut, cleans like Clorox, and feels like energy. It'll elevate any cleaning routine to not just clean, but also make every room smell like a tropical coconut getaway. Discover how Clorox Sentiva's powerful clean and refreshing scents can transform your space. Get yours in Coconut or other fabulous scents at a nearby retail store. It's time for today's Lucky Land Horoscope with Victoria Cash. Life's gotten mundane, so shake up the daily routine and be adventurous with a trip to Lucky Land. You know what they say, your chance to win starts with a spin. So go to LuckyLandSlots.com to play over 100 social casino-style games for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Get lucky today at LuckyLandSlots.com. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply.